Yes, you can start now, sir. Okay. Pranita, Pranita, you can start. Yes, sir. On the occasion of 124th birth anniversary of Dr. Punjabra alias Bhavsaib Deshmukh, Shri Shivaji Education Society Amravati Science College Nagpur in collaboration with Microbiologist Society India, organizing a lecture series on the theme Indian speaking from abroad. So on behalf of the organizing committee, I take this opportunity to welcome our eminent guest speaker, Dr. Prabhanjan Giram, sir, a postdoctoral associate from the State University at Buffalo, New York. So I take this opportunity to welcome all the participants of today's guest lecture. I welcome Dr. Uh, respected Dr. A.M. Deshmukh, sir, President, Microbiologist Society India, as well as respected Dr. Uh, Patankar, sir, National Coordinator of Microbiologist Society India, as well as Dr. Singh, sir, and all the participants of today's guest lecture. So it is my privilege to introduce our guest speaker of today's guest lecture, Dr. Prabhanjan Giram, sir. He is currently postdoctoral fellow at University of Buffalo, Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Buffalo, USA. Before this, he was adjunct professor at Dr. Uh, D.Y. Patil Institute of Pharmaceutical Science and Research, Pune, as well as he was assistant professor at, in the same institute. And before that, uh, in 2019 at Newton Baba, uh, under Newton Baba Fellowship, at King's College London, United King, Kingdom. In his professional qualification, he has pursued his undergraduation as well as post-graduation from University, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar University, Aurangabad, Maharashtra, as well as his, his PhD from Polymer Science and Engineering National Chemical Laboratory, Pune, Maharashtra in 2019. In his research interest, he has his research expertise in synthesis of bio-compatible biodegradable copolymers such as PLGA, PCL, as well as in the development of complex polymeric and lipid nanoparticles for drug delivery applications in the bladder, breast and colon cancer photodynamic therapy, as well as preclinical pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics animal studies. He has also expertise in fabrication of non-woven core shell aligned in parallel nanofibers for biomedical applications. In his professional skill, he has his experience in polymer synthesis and characterization, as well as formulation development, nanofabrication with electrospinning, photodynamic therapy, animal handling, cell culture experiments, antimicrobial experiments, as well as various instruments he has handled softwares handled and other skills also. In his credit, he had some patents entitled polycatalyzed by zinc prolinate and stannous octate and toxicity study in 2016, as well as in 2019, one more patent uh, entitled targeted delivery of irinotecan PLGA nanoparticles to combat, combat colon cancer. Apart from this, he has uh, many research publications in national and international journals to his credit, as well as he has reviewed many uh, international and national repute uh, research articles. He has attended and participated in various national and international conferences, as well as written book chapters in more than seven books to his credit. In his research experiment experience, he is the he is presently the postdoctoral fellow, and in his professional development activities, he he has the uh, many he has invited as a resource resource person in various guest lectures as well as conferences and seminars as well as he has handled many different projects under his uh, able guidance. He had he is also the recipient of many awards and scholarships. He is endowed with Ratan Tata Trust Scholarship for Excellent Academic Performance in Bachelor of Pharma Pharmacy in 2009, as well as Junior Research Fellowship from Council of Scientific and Industrial Research in 2016, as well as in 2019, as well as Newton Bhaba Fellowship at King College London in 2018. He was selected for the Evonik Healthcare Germany of worth 1,500 euro for best publication in 2018, 
and selected as Bentham ambassador for Bentham journals by Bentham Science Publishers in 2020. So thank you very much. Uh, respected Dr. Pra Prabhanjan Giram sir for accepting our invitation to deliver your precious lecture in our guest lecture series, uh, series which is entitled as Indians Speaking from Abroad. And the topic of uh, your precious guest lecture is Polymers in Biomedical Applications. So I requesting you on behalf of the organizing committee to please deliver your lecture and please elaborate your journey from India to abroad to our participants. Please. Sir. Can I start? Yes, please. So first, uh, I would like to say sorry for technical glitch. And I think there is no fun without this uh, technical glitch in the online lecture series. Unfortunately, my camera is not working. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank this organizing committee that is Science College Congress Nagar, Nagpur and Microbiologist Society India for providing us researcher who are abroad as opportunity to present their journey from India, mostly small villages, to US for their career. And I think this series surely help for new Indian generation to take home message for their future career perspective. So good evening all. So today we will start with our topic that is polymers in the biomedical applications. But first of all, I will tell my journey how I started my graduation from B farm, M farm and PhD and then postdoctoral associate. I completed my B pharmacy from Yes Institute of Pharmacy, Aurangabad. At that time, I am not aware that I will do master or I can go for the research. Like all other students, I also confuse what to do after this graduation. But as we travel or start our journey, we will get our path. So at the end of B farm, I have qualified examination that is important for the post uh, graduate education that is GPAT and I got admission to the government college of pharmacy Aurangabad. So while completing this young farm, so I am curious about the how these drugs work in the human, their mechanism of action, how they will work what are their toxicity, what is their safety, and if you want to increase the efficacy, that means effectiveness in the patients, so how this can be helpful. So at that time, I decided I will learn more deeper these concepts and try to research something that will be beneficial for the society. So then after completing, M farm, I have qualified CSIR net and joined National Chemical Laboratory as a PhD student in the polymer science and engineering. And you know, world cannot be imagined without this polymer because once we start our morning, we start use of this polymer, either commodity application, that is non-biomedical application. And when it comes to the healthcare, that considered as a biomedical application. Then during this PhD, I also selected for the Newton Baba Fellowship at King's College London. And you all know King's College London has more than 13 Nobel laureates. And that inspired me to start my research journey. Then while return after from this King's College London, I joined again NCL and there I also again selected for the 
Udraj 2018 award that is given for the researcher who perform better during his research journey so that award is for around uh, 1500 and that is given to one of the best uh, work from the asian region so then i decided i will work for the research and after that i have joined university at buffalo the state university of new york for my research work so let's start our topic that is polymer in the biomedical application so you know during this covid and pandemic we all are suffer lot and polymer reminds us the need of research because it start from ppe kit all medical facility this needs polymer so for common people what is polymer so with the help of this cartoon i will simply explain the meaning of cartoon or this polymer that is polymer means if we consider one person that is cons considered as a monomer in the polymer chemistry but if you unite this person or single individual you will get the chain of this individual person that is called as the polymer similarly in the polymer also if small small unit that is molecule like benzene single benzene and if you unite or keep together several benzenes you will get the chain of benzene and that chain of benzene is called as the polymer so then i have categorized these polymers into two categories one is good because today we are we are uh, discussing about the biomedical application so these polymers these are good and bad those which has properties means characteristics like biocompatible means compatible with our system degradable means which degrade in our body without any external factor and excretion means removal from our body these are three most important criteria for polymer to be good for biomedical application then another is the bad polymer bad in the sense that they if to insert this polymer into our body they will not degrade then they are not decomposable and they are toxic to human body means this bad polymers in the sense they are not used for the biomedical application they are using for the other commodity application so i have explained what is the polymer that is when when small small unit of the monomer is combined together it results into the polymer if you consider your polythene your cloth these are just examples of the polymer then another criteria for biomedical application is the biomaterial biomaterials means it should be derived from biological origin biocompatibility it should be compatible with our body system without any side effect so these are the criteria examples in our daily life we can say kitosan gelatin cellulose means this is the combination of the natural or synthetic like plga polymers and these are used for different biomedical application which we are going to discuss in the um, upcoming slide that can be prosthetic diagnostic therapeutics and storage application so in first cartoon i have explained this simple polymer so now what is the composition composition means if the chain is of different individual unit topology topology means whether this chain arrange in the cycle in the star or the linear or network or like branch that is called as the called as the topology then functionality functionality means if it is multifunctional or it is functional by side or it is macromolecule or functionalization at the end or telecyclic means functionalization at the both end so this composition 
topology and functionality defines the functional function of this polymer or its properties which are going to use so when when whenever we see life expectancy and industrialization in this graph we can see first in the bronze and iron age we are most abundantly dependent on these two source but when industrialization start and polymerization comes into picture we see the growth in the different world and here we can see we are very much dependent on this polymer and we cannot imagine this world without the polymer when we consider old hospital and modern hospital you can see the difference in these pictures you can see here old hospitals all this ceiling all this facility is either of the iron or bronze but when we see today's modern modern hospital if you visit you can see the difference these materials are the polyester acrylate polymethyl methacrylate that that are originated from the polymers and these are mostly used for the hospitalized application so when we these are the five major invention in the chemistry and that make the world modern world more efficient first is the haber bosch process used for the synthesis of the ammonia and this ammonia is used for many different purposes and most important use is agricultural fertilizer because our india is mostly based on this agricultural sector then again penicillin you know the discovery of this penicillin and penicillin is different generation of this penicillins are used for the infection caused by gram positive and gram negative bacteria then polythene polythene when we start our day this carry bags toys and other commodity uh, plastic things are made from this polythene then contraceptive pills for control of the birth this is mostly used that contains the progesterone and estrogen then liquid crystal display this polymer this is mostly used in your display it has property when you hit this polymer either with electricity or with the help of some light it will transmit the light and you will get visible your display so this is the lord alexander todd he made significant contribution to the polymer and he said i am inclined to think that the development of polymerization is perhaps the biggest things that chemistry has done where it has the biggest effect on the everyday life and you you are witness for that that you cannot imagine this world without this polymer so these are some interesting historical facts about the polymers you know this ivory that is obtained from the teeth of this elephant and it is used for different ornaments rubber tree you know the source of the polyisoprene and that is used in the making the rubber and you know the scientist goodyear he made significant contribution in the polymer with the help of adding sulfur that is called as the process of the making making tire with using this rubber and sulfur then celluloid the alexander parks is one of the mo most prominent metallurgic scientist who developed this polymer if you see any transparent film in the market you can easily identify this film as a celluloid then celac celac is obtained from uh, this insect saliva and this is used as the sealant for wood other furniture or fixtures bakelite leo bakelan who developed this bakelite polymer this is the first synthetic polymer and which has extraordinary application in the commodity application so here i have summarized the history of polymers used in the medical field first is 
1600 BC, that is animal sieve that is obtained from the like tendon, tendon of the bone and which used to tie this our muscle with the bone. And this is most widely used biomaterial um, at that time. But as time grows, then silk is come, then silk mostly used in the rhinoplasty of nose surgery. Then seashells, these are also used for implants of the teeth. Then again, artificial heart, that is this technology that is developed. And as the modern civil civilization grows, like the era of natural and synthetic polymer like PMMA, that is mostly used in the spec. Then polymer made from plant that is also used for the blood or cellophane, blood membrane. Nylon, most of the threads available in the market, these are made from this nylon. And then as we grow like polyurethane foam, this hospital based silicon for the cardiac or breast implants, these are developed because this all invention are made from this polymer. So next point we will cover how this polymer is used for this different application. First application is biomedical. And in that we should know what are the desired properties of this polymer that are important for the biomedical application. Like physical, mechanical, these properties, then thermal, electrical, chemical resistance, sterilization, long-term stability, durability, shelf life, barrier properties, cytotoxicities, and biodegradabilities. And these are the medical grade polymer supplier manufacturing companies or organization have control over this polymer. If our polymer do not meet this criteria, in that case, we have to modify the synthesis process in order to get this polymer with desired properties. If we see plastic, these are the most commodity plastic. I think just you need to see like these are the polymers like polystyrene, low density, high density, and PVC. Then engineering thermoplastic, like engineering base application that is used in the medical devices. Then again, high performance thermoplastic. These are the different categories. I think this is not important for you. If you see the surgical instruments that are available in the biomedical field, like surgical plastic, tray, leads, cages, then dental x-ray holder, retractors, extractors, forceps, TBL trials, then handles, disposable surgical kits. These are mostly used from these different polymers. They are either combination to improve their properties. In pharmaceutical packaging, if you see the packaging, these blood products, these hematological things, your saline, then this pharmaceutical different packaging or this container, these are made from the PVP polyethylene, polypropylene, polyester, poly, 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 polyvinylidene dichloride. And again, medical devices. I think you all are aware of these medical devices. Syringe, needle, plastic container. These are the device set up and which contain mostly these polymers like polyethylene, polypropylene, polysulfone and polyfrin. So these polymers mostly used for the medical devices. Then medical implants. Medical implants means after surgery, we will insert like cardiac stent or breast implant in order to fill that empty space and release certain therapeutic agents like in case of stent, we are adding some anti-cancer agent to prevent the, again, the coagulation of this artery that is coronary artery for longer effect. And this stent and this material is mostly made from these 
polylactide that is biomedical polymer and silicon silicon based gel prosthetic these are the artificial devices that replace missing part in our body so like atal bihari vajpayee he replaces knee with the help of this bio material in these are other indian a film actor and mountain climber they use this bio materials and they succeed in their life to help our nation then these are the examples of material that are available in this prosthetics then drug delivery most important application so you all know about tablets and capsule it also contains the polymers like gelatin or that coating hpmc or other polymers and these are also comes under the biomedical application like systemic delivery you can use nano particle or nano carrier to improve the efficiency and decrease the side effect then again you can see photodynamic therapy gene therapy micro devices 3d printing this all modern application they use this polymers like conductive or fiber for hydrogel so like hydro on um, um, extra um, external therapy we can monitor and like hyperthermia we can monitor externally and this uh, conductive fiber will heat and it will help in the wound site or any curing this tumor tissue then these these are there are some methods to promote healing of human tissue like sutures we tie this damaged part surgical clips surgical staples to teach without uh, our non degradable polymer so that we replace with our degradable one hydrogel it will use in the dressing form so again regenerated human tissue if our tissue is damaged sometimes it will not replace but if we use bio material this bio material has similar extra cellular matrix which support the growth and allow efficient growth of this tissue on this scaffold biosensor this is another interesting application like to de detect presence and amount of specific substance and transmit the data means in simple term we can say biosensor that help for detecting concentration of any chemical in our body with the help of some digital devices and there are different polymers that are used for these applications then in this pandemic in pandemic we observe that surgical mask face shield surgical and isolation gowns surgical suits medical gloves these all are made from these polymers so but most important issue with this polymer is their degradability if you remember like 10 to 20 year ago there is a flood condition in the mumbai area and that is mostly caused by the blockage of this polymer so to save our ecosystem our earth our plant system and to maintain this cycle we have to think about the recycling of this medical waste and mostly environmental protection agencies and other organization are thinking about this social and environmental issue and mostly these bd recycle bins these are available to dispose and proper disposal of these containers if you see the contribution of this polymer for biomedical applications these are different institutes which are working like iit bombay national chemical laboratory institute of stem cell biology then sri chitra 
Tirumal Institute of Medical Science and Technology, Indian Institute of Technology, IIT, then IIT Guwahati and IIT Kharagpur. Means these are the Indian institutes who are making significant contribution to the biomedical field. Apart from this, these are the significant contribution made by this biomedical polymer. These are from ENCL, the like ocular and mag maxillofacial implants. These implants are uh, developed by team from a director ENCL and director of Venture Center. Then prosthetic R that is developed by Dr. Prakash Vadgaukar from Polymer Science and Engineering. Then apart from this early cancer detection technology that is developed by Dr. Jain Khandare. Then silk-based bio-artificial disc that is used for the uh, biomedical application that is developed by IIT Guwahati. Then this is Dr. PK City that is the Jaipur food that is also available in the market. And apart from this, a protective gel of polyoxime institute of stem cell biology and regenerative medicine is developed in order to protect the farmer or worker. Those are available in the agricultural sector to protect from this insecticide or pesticides. Again, back to our origin, the significant contribution that is made by our medical field to the world, like Ayurveda, Siddha, the father of surgery, the plastic surgery, then surgery and cataract surgery, treatment of kidney stone, cure of leprosy, and treatment of visceral leishmaniasis that is caused by leishmania donovani, and yoga. Means if you see, India is the solution for most of these most incredible, modern medical field. So as the chemist, we have to answer these questions like there are certain diseases and whether treatment is available or under development, like if you know HIV and AIDS, the treatment is available to tuberculosis, yes, malaria, yes, if no means these are, if exist means yes, and if there is a cross means these are under the development, similarly for respiratory condition, it is exist, but if you see cancer and some other diseases, these are under the development. And there is a big scientific challenge or quest for the scientists to overcome these issues. So, and at the end, I would like to thank this Microbiology Society of India and all organizer for giving me opportunity to share my experience and thank you all. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer your questions. And again, thank you for technical glitch. And yes. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, precious lecture on the topic which you have uh, shared with us that uh, polymers in biomedical applications. You have really emphasized its applications in various sectors. So we are uh, having that much information in today's lecture that in which sector this biopolymers are uh, playing their important, playing its important role. So if the audience have uh, any questions, they can please put in the chat box or they can directly ask to our guest speaker, sir. Sir, can you please minimize your presentation? Yes, yes, sure. Hello, madam. Yes, yes, ma'am, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, good evening to all. Uh, madam, please. I'm Dr. Nipa Pandhi, uh, calling from Rajkot, Gujarat. Okay. And uh, thank you very much, sir, for excellent presentation, highly informative, very interesting. I have two questions, sir. Number one, 
you said that to work as a biomedical polymer the polymer has to be biodegradable now when it is used for medical implants then does this property is valid like uh, suppose you are inserting it into the body uh, for yes. breast implant or as a stent and suppose it gets degraded then yes. uh, what happens sir yeah very good questions and so for that purpose we design these implants or medical devices which has high molecular weight if the molecular weight is high like 1 lakh or 5 lakhs in that case the degrad degradability is get decrease like there you can you can say their half life is improve their mechanical properties also higher in that case the degradation process is slow but simply if you replace that high molecular polymer with low low molecular weight like 5000 or 1000 in that case that polymer will degrade in 1 to 2 months that's why the when you replace your any part or the artery with this implants in that case doctor give you certain time like this stent is useful for 5 year 10 year or 15 year okay sir thank you sir my second question is uh, does these polymers have any antigenic property like suppose uh, it is implanted then does it show any hypersensitivity or any side effects yes yes uh, this is also a very good question and this is one of the biggest challenge in the field of biomedical application if you see the most commercially available polymers which are synthesized from the stannous octoate and this stannous octoate is toxic chemical if this stannous uh, uh, stannous octoate is not purified extracted from this polymer in that case it cause antigenic properties that may trigger immune response or like dna intercalation or genetic mutation so for that purpose our catalyst should be biocompatible okay sir thank you very much and thank you to deshmukh sir also for arranging such nice lectures thank you all <clears throat> yes ma'am uh, if anybody from the participants if wanted to ask any query then they can please uh, hello sir am i audible yes yes sir you are audible yes sir first of all uh, i must congratulate uh, you sir for uh, this uh, very nice and informative lecture and we are fortunate to listen you and thank you for enlightening us uh, i want to ask just one question sir uh, one important thing regarding this uh, as you have told the biodegradation is very important part the toxicity assessment or uh, degradation chemistry of this particular polymers how much it uh, uh, needs to study uh, before using this polymers for a drug delivery and how we can just go for such a kind of studies actually yeah, to study the degradation and assessment that is very challenging because if you insert this polymer into the body or your human system you do not know the exact cause of degradation there are particular like there are different tests like toxicity study degradation study assessment of degradation and toxicity these are well known and available in the literature but as the changes are dynamic and you are not exactly able to find the cause of the toxicity in that case i think it is always difficult so for that purpose i think you have to follow cgmp means current good manufacturing practices in order to get your zero defect polymer yes thank you very much sir thank you once again for this nice and informative lecture yes so anybody else from the participants hello yes yes sir please hello uh, yes sir uh, thank you so much uh, dr prabhanjal sir this is nandev sumbre yes yes uh, sir uh, this is very informative section for me uh, 
because it re- it could relate to uh, relate with me side also because i am working in medical devices qms auditor so i can i can i can relate this so just uh, just i want to information regarding how can you relate this information with regulatory perspective just uh, i need some brief regarding regulatory perspective <clears throat> uh that 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 is the my question sir yes yes i think that is one of the most significant challenge for the manufacturer yes. and innovator and scientist because if you de- design bio material which has all properties all things are perfect but if it is not approved from i i, I can say like from you like you are working on the regulatory agencies then this product is fail into the market and all scientists all these industrialists uh, and stakeholders has to suffer from this but yes there are still certain challenges in the field from re- regulatory point of view but with the development of the industrialization most of the industries are uh trying to compile with this guideline and they are using like some empirical safety, uh, safety data sheet like more extraction purification toxicity assessment degradation in order to provide efficient data required by these regulatory agencies to avoid this regulatory hurdle right 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 but Perfect, i think sir, i think actually... I, okay yes sir yeah yeah sir continue continue this yeah i think this regulatory agency also needs to help this innovator or scientist so they can design material with less re- regulatory hurdle or stringency sometimes there are unnecessary regulatory hurdle for these innovators and in that case it is very difficult for them to push this product into the market uh, yes 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 sir. so as you see that uh, the us regulatory having their own guidelines then european countries having their own guidelines and indians having their own guidelines under the imdr yes so i think if 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 a manufacturer want to be uh, release their product in indian market it could easy because indian guidelines tell that like shall determine only de- you have to determine the things whatever indian imdr providing yes yes but okay, i think other the european market that is the ce market Yeah, yeah yeah because this if you see this market different market has different guidelines like certain say just determined but certain agencies will ask what is the exact concentration it should be less than like per- 10 ppm or 5 ppm right sir right sir right sir because sir as you see that the conformity of europe that is c marking is mandatory for the implants whatever you are going to attaching with polymer so that is there is a drug as well as medical devices combination is there so as we yes. see the specific guideline uh, european conformity looking for the design and development and their evaluation part in that evaluation they are asking major for the uh, clinical data uh, looking only for the major part is that clinical data stability as well as sterilization and they have a very stringent guideline in that so i think manufacturer having a, a more stringent guideline in eu market but as well as they will they could might be uh, connect with that 210 that is uh, us guideline and indian imdr uh, okay. thank you sir yeah 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 this is very informative for me and i can relate this because i, I have some uh, information about this and uh, your answer is very uh, informative and very uh, mem- uh, memorable for me actually so thank you so much sir <clears throat> dr how this uh, bio polymers are manufactured actually there are two simple reaction one is the condensation reaction condensation means like functionalization of one polymer with another polymer like if we combine acid with amine or acid with alcohol that is called as the condensation polymer and another one is the step growth polymer step growth polymer in that we are like styrene benzene attached to unsaturation and with the help of free radicals that polymerization is initiated and as a chain grow like one chain is added to other and this polymer are grow like simple step any biopolymers are used in this biopolymer yes yes you can say plga lactide uh, p uh, polylactide glycolide 
these are like simple cycles and if you open this ring this ring will get attached similar way this get developed with the help of this polymerization reaction like ring opening just rings are opening <clears throat> okay so anyone from the participants if you have, if you have any queries you can please ask or we we could con conclude here up to that so yes so thank you very much dr prabhanjan giram sir for your informative lecture yes it is really appreciated from all the participants uh, this would be on the uh, youtube channel of our uh, science college as well as on microbiology society india so i am requesting you to please put your email id in the chat box so that participants if wanted to contact you for further queries uh, they may contact you on your email id sure. so please sir and uh, on behalf of the organizing committee's honorable principal professor mahendra dhore sir from science college congress nagar nagpur and honorable president of microbiology society india dr arvind deshmukh sir on behalf of the organizing committee i dr pranita gulhane take this opportunity to thank you for your precious lecture for your informative lecture sir thank you very much thank you madam and thank you all organizer for this wonderful opportunity and again sorry for the technical glitch thank you all yeah thank you sir thank you